Welcome back. In the previous part, we did quite a few bonding events, but now we've got some side quests to do. We've got one here from Vincent, called The Secret Admirer. I am in need of aid. Some fair maiden has sent me several messages proclaiming her love for me. And who could blame her? I simply must know who she is. So would some kind soul help me find her and bring her to me? More details behind the storage building. Vincent followed year two, class one. Excuse me, is your name Vincent by any chance? Indeed it is. Standing before you is a nobleman overflowing with love and pathos. The one, the only, Vincent Florald. I presume that you are the Cupid that I asked the student council to send me. He's quite the character. He really seems to like himself, but that's what I've grown to expect from class one. I am no Cupid, but I am here on behalf of the student council, yes. <laughs> then you may still well serve my purposes. Allow me to congratulate you on making your way here. So based on your request and my new nickname, I assume you want me to find someone for you. Yes. Something along those lines. Do you have some time to spare? If so, I shall begin explaining the particulars of my request. Let's hear it. Please elaborate on your request. <laughs> A fine answer indeed. Although, before we continue... Phew. Saritha is currently nowhere to be seen. Now that I think about it, this is kind of an unusual meeting place. Are you hoping to keep this request quiet? Not exactly. I was merely hoping to avoid things getting... meddled in. My father sent Sarifa to the academy to keep an eye on me. As you can imagine, her watchfulness can occasionally be rather constraining. Huh. Well, that is a part from the meat of the matter. To be blunt, I've received not one, not two, but three passionate love letters of late, and all from a single writer. Curiously, however, the writer in question signs with naught but a nom de plume. A nom de plume? Well, it's a bit forward, isn't it? What I would request of you, my fine fellow, is to find out just which lovely lady is responsible for these. That's reasonable, but... Are you sure it's appropriate for me to try to find her? These are anonymous, after all. Do take a moment to think it over. The fact that she chose to use a pen name rather than remaining completely anonymous is proof of a pining, hopeful heart. In fact, I am absolutely certain that she wishes for me to find her. I suppose I'll have to trust your judgment on this one. What's more, she sent cookies along with her third letter. I would hardly be worthy of the floral name if I did not properly thank her, would I? Yeah, I don't think I could stop you at this point, even if I tried. Do you have any additional information that would help me pinpoint exactly who we're looking for? I do indeed. The first hint is that she is a first year. As a man well versed in the feelings of beautiful women, I was able to deduce this from the respectful tone of her letters. Additionally, the fact that she attached a pressed grand rose at the end of each letter may serve as a hint as well. A grand rose. If I remember correctly, those are the flowers you use when confessing your love to someone, right? <laughs> Quite. Which brings us to why this is a hint. The only way to obtain a grand rose in Trista is to purchase it from the town florist. So, if we ask the florist who's purchased one, precisely, we will be able to discover just which shy maiden has sent those letters to me. Would you take on this task for me, then? As long as you don't mind me sticking to the plan we just discussed. I don't see why not. 
I am truly indebted to you. Based on her pseudonym, at her use of a grand rose, I can only imagine our lady is the very model of Grace. Now that you mention it, why would she be like Grace? Grace is over in Crossbell. Maybe. Right now we've gone beyond what I know in Crossbell, so it's like... Yep. Now that you mention it, what was the name she used? Oh, it seems I neglected to mention that very important detail. She calls herself the Grand Maiden, a nickname taken from the daughter of Baron, who married into the Imperial family long ago. The Emperor at the time was so smitten that he gave her countless numbers of Grand Roses, and so came the moniker. I see. Can't say I've heard this story before, but it in is interesting. But this is no time to stand around thinking about it. I'll head over to the flower shop right away. Very well. I'll leave this matter in your clearly capable hands. Clearly. I shall leave the investigation in your capable hands. I look forward to the good word. Excuse me. Would you mind if I asked you a question? Not at all. Go ahead. Reen explained the situation to Jane and asked about any first years who had recently purchased any Grand Roses. Hmm. It wouldn't be hard to find out if I looked at my records, but... I'm not exactly sure I should disclose that information. Understandably so. Don't intend to do anything with this information that they don't want me to, though. If they ask me to keep their identity a secret, that's what I'll do. I see. Well, if that's the case, I guess I can help you out. Just remember, though, it's your job to give the mystery sender your support and nothing more. I'll wish her the best of luck. <sighs> this request's getting pretty complicated at this point. It's not. Right. I count three first years who've made a Grand Rose purchase recently. In class order, first is Beryl from class three. What would Beryl want with it? Then there's Vivi from Class 4. Yeah, we can understand that one. And Rosine from Class 5. Hmm. I see. Uh, thank you very much for the help. The fact that she mentioned Vivi has me worried. Hope she's not trying the same trick on someone else right now. Yeah. Not at all. Good luck. Um, you're Barrel from Class 3, right? <laughs> I certainly am. What do you want from me? Actually, there was something I wanted to ask you. Reen told Beryl about his investigation and asked if she was the one who sent Vincent the letters. <laughs> do I seem like the kind of girl who'd be interested in romance? I needed to purchase a grand rose to use in a ritual. That's all. I see. That answers my question. But now I'm worried what the ritual she mentioned is all about. Oh, that's all I wanted to ask. Sorry to disturb you. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to be disturbed. Good day to you. What's up, Reen? Were you so taken with my feminine charms that you couldn't stand another moment away from me? There's something I'd like to ask you. Reen explained the situation to Vivi and asked if she was the one who sent Vincent the letters. Well, now, that is pretty interesting. I'm going to take that as a no. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was me, but I'm having too much fun teasing Linda to set my sights on any boys right now. Of course you are. You did buy a grand rose, though. I'm telling you tricked another poor, unsuspecting soul into helping you torment her. Pretty much. But can you blame me? She falls for it every single time. I can't help myself. You're a monster. Poor Linda. Can't imagine what she has to deal with with a sister like this, and being an airship at the same time. Excuse me, you're Rosine from Class 5, aren't you? That's correct. Why do you ask? I have a quick, kind of personal question for you. Rean explained the situation to Rosine, and asked if it was her who sent the letters to Vincent. Oh no, that certainly wasn't me. I did buy a grand rose, but it was for the purpose of decorating the church. Oh, I see. Sorry to ask such an embarrassing question, then. I it's fine. 
Okay, I've asked all three of the girls Jane told me about now. But it seems like none of them were behind the letters. I'm out of leads now, so might as well tell Vincent we're out of luck. Tell me. Did your investigation prove successful? Wait, don't tell me. Have you brought our mystery woman here? Oh, be still, my beating heart. Yeah, about that. I wasn't able to find her in the end. You cannot be serious. Did you ask the florist as we discussed? I did, and I spoke to all three girls who purchased Grand Roses. None of their reasons for doing so had anything to do with you. I can go into detail if you'd like. It matters not. If they do not concern me, then they are simply not my concern. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to help. But there is one thing I'm curious about. Where could a girl get a grand rose if she didn't go to the florists? There's no way to tell. Perhaps if the grand maiden is a noble, she could have had an alternate source. However... My darling Vincent, I've found you. Can't do a hoarse voice. It would ruin my voice if I tried. Best I can do is monk. Who goes there? State your business. The cookies I just baked ended up far more delicious than I ever could have imagined. So delicious that they could only be destined for the lips of my beloved. My elegant, dashing, darling Vincent. What could possess a person to approach another out of nowhere and say such befuddling things? Furthermore, I do not have even the foggiest idea of who you are. <laughs> oh, but you do. What if I told you that I was the Grand Maiden all along? No way. Dumbfounded. I can hardly blame you for being speechless with joy. My real name is Margarita Dresden. The lovely grand roses I attached were grown by my family. So that's how you got them. If you're a part of the Baron Dresden's family, then... Could it mean... Oh, so you know the story. Your suspicions are indeed correct. I, Margarita Dresden, hail from the same family line as the lovely grand maiden herself. It all adds up. I inconceivable. How could you, of all people, be related to the Grand Baden? When her beauty pales in comparison to your own. Look, darling, we're already completing each other's thoughts. Oh dear. And yours are oh so sweet. What you said couldn't have been further from my actual thought. <laughs> Even when you're shy, you're still so wonderful. Seeing the surprise on your handsome face made waiting to reveal my name entirely worth it in the end. Now, my beautiful Vincent, it is time for you to reply to my love letters. Will you enter a relationship with me? You may choose one of two replies. I would be delighted or there would be no greater honor. Sorry, how many options did you say you were giving him? This woman could hardly be more different than the demure maiden her letters made her out to be. My only answer for you is a resounding no. Now be gone and bother me no more. So, that's how it is. <laughs> oh, just when I think you couldn't be more adorable. Just think you're the sort of man who hides his true feelings away. I beg your pardon? There is no need to fear. Please, have one of these special cookies I prepared. One bite and you'll no longer the feel the need to keep your innermost longings out of public view. <laughs> Don't tell me. You mixed something into your cookies. Oh, but that is for me to know and for you to find out. Stay back. Do not come any closer. You Don't just stand there. I'll need your aid if I'm to survive. I have no idea how to handle a situation like this either. <laughs> Don't worry, my darling. There may be a slightly bitter aftertaste, but it will all be worth it in the end. I've been looking for you, Master Vincent. Sarifa. Dare I ask what you are doing in a place like this? 
Uh, Rifa, I beg of you, please free me from this terrifying situation. If I recall, you are my sweetheart, darling maid, are you not? So, this is the Sarifa he mentioned. As much as I hate to interrupt the situation at hand, I am afraid I must. Master Vincent, your presence at the upper class dorm is required at once. A delivery of the utmost importance from Clount Florald awaits you there. I see. Then I have no choice. I must go at once. B but These cookies are a present for Master Vincent, are they not? In that case, may I ask you to leave them in my hands for now. I'll make sure he enjoys every last one of them later. Well, if you insist. Margarita begrudgingly handed over the bag of cookies to Sarifa. It seems as though Master Vincent has roped you into this nonsense as well. Hopefully, this can dull some of the pain that this annoyance has surely caused you. Uh, thank you. With that, I wish you all good day. Let us go, Master Vincent. Uh, indeed. Oh dear, oh dear. That maid may prove to be quite the obstacle. But no matter. There shall be plenty of opportunities to woo my darling from here on out. <laughs> I believe it is time to get started on a new batch of cookies. Well, today's been full of unique encounters to say the least. At least that request is over and done with. Born to be Orble, from George and Angelica. We're testing the Orble bike's capabilities on a highway near Trista. If you're curious, come talk to us in the engineering building. Hey there, Reen. Thanks for stopping by. Might I ask where Elisa and Laura are? Those two lovely flowers would do wonders in brightening up this dreary old building. Let's not make Reen's life even harder than it already is. <laughs> Sorry, I probably shouldn't think out loud. <laughs> I still haven't talked to Angelica much. She's definitely an interesting one. Oh, uh, yeah. That aside, your request was for me to assist with testing out the orbital bike, wasn't it? So, what will I be doing? Oh, please. I could hear you making those vroom vroom noises before you even step through the door. I was not? But wait, does that mean... Yeah, we want you to ride the orbital bike. Me? Can't deny that that's what I wanted this to be, but I never expected it to actually happen. I'll give you all the juicy details when we're actually ready to test. Before we start, however, I want to make sure you have the time. So how about it? You ready to ride? Yes. Okay, let's ride. <laughs> Good answer. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about the bike. Everything you see here is something that Angie asked me to build for her. And because of that, the bike's been fine-tuned to meet her specific needs. In a nutshell, it's all Angie. The engine, the brakes, even the handlebars. I see. As you might expect, she and that bike are practically symbiotic. When she's on it, she's a sight to behold. But because we've tuned it specifically to her, it's become a little too tough for anyone else to handle. <laughs> Think of her as an unruly horse. There's no denying she's a fine bike, but she doesn't play nice with strangers. Right. Really hoping I make it through this alive. Don't scare him now, Angie. Crow's ridden it just fine. He only lost a leg, and he got that reattached. But I suppose he's been working on this bike since it was started, too. Compared to him, you're a complete beginner. Which is great! You'll have a more objective opinion after you ride. I guess it makes sense why you asked me that. <laughs> Feeling a little nervous, are we? Let's head over to the highway. Oh dear. So, what are Toe and Crow doing here? 
<laughs> Angie and George told us you should be doing this. So I came along to show some support and take some time off work. My reason isn't quite as sweet as little Toa's here. Like I said before, this bike's at least partially my baby. Think of me as an overprotective father, making sure you don't mess up and hurt my girl when you take her out. Thanks. Crow, don't make him any more nervous. Don't worry, Reen. Just ignore everything this guy says. I do, and it's worked great for me. You can rebuild the bike. So stay focused on keeping yourself safe. Right, thanks. Do you have much experience riding horses? Actually, yeah. You shouldn't have any trouble, then. She's a whole different beast, but the basics of riding are the same. So have fun! Thanks, Angelica. That helps. I won't let you down. Okay, then. That should be just about everything you need to know. I think I get it now. There are three things you want me to test are starting up the bike, shifting gears, and coming to a stop, correct? That's right. I want to see how you handle everything. Let me give you a few pointers. You might not really get them until you're on the bike proper, though. Hit me. First of all, you can't ride it if you can't get it moving. So let's talk about how to get started. Starting the engine's simple enough, but how smoothly you ride off will depend on how well you can operate the bike's clutch. Once you shift into first gear, open the throttle and then slowly and steadily release the clutch. Release the clutch slowly and steadily when I start moving. Okay, I'll try not to forget. Next up is switching gears. Before switching gears, make sure to pull in the clutch quickly and firmly. Once you shift gears, release the clutch slowly and steadily, just like when you start a up. I can do that. Last thing you need to worry about is stopping the bike, which you probably want to know how to do. When you want to slow down, release the throttle and apply the brakes to both wheels, front and back. You're going to want to give each one different amounts of pressure, though. Apply the brakes strongly to the front wheel and lightly to the back wheel. That should bring you to a smooth stop. Strongly to the front, lightly to the back. That's a lot to remember, but I think I can do this. <laughs> That's the way. This is all about learning through experience and getting used to riding on the fly anyway. So what do you say? Ready to go? You bet. Alright then. First is starting up the engine. Wow, this is pretty intense. <laughs> Kinda reminds me of how I felt when I first rode a horse. Right, let's push those nerves to the side and get going. Okay, so pull the clutch level, shift the first gear, and twist the throttle. Now that I've done that, all I need to do is let go of the clutch and I'll be moving. Angelica told me how to do this. What exactly did she say again? Slow and steady. This wheel's just spinning like crazy. Now we're talking. This is great. Seriously, those wheels are spinning like crazy. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> there he goes. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he gets back. He's gonna love it. <laughs> Hopefully. How do I get off this crazy thing? Let's see what it looks like with turbo, though. See, that looks just more... more. See, that just looks slow. And then it's like, yeah, like we're right in here. Wow, this feels amazing. I'm amazed at just how stable and smooth the ride is, too, considering how heavy it is. I think I'm used to this speed now. Let's try switching gears. All right, first I need to roll off the throttle. I need to pull in the clutch, change gears, then release it. Jenica told me I had to handle the clutch a specific way during all of this. What was it again? Was, was it pulling quickly, really slowly? Right. I need to pull in the clutch quickly and firmly, then change gears. And after that, I need to release the clutch slowly but steadily. 
Right, we're really going now, look. There we go. Perfect. Going this fast really does feel great. Get why Angelica loves this so much. Well, the fun's going to come to an end eventually. It's probably about time to stop. Obviously, I need to hit the brakes, but how much pressure do I put on them? Like, to me, it's like, it feels like the wrong way around. It's like, strongly at the front, it's like it's gonna, like, almost stop the front wheel, which will catapult you forward. But, alright, strongly at the front, lightly at the back. Hmm, pretty sure Angelica said strong on the front brakes, and light on the rear brakes. I stopped almost exactly where I expected to. I guess I did it right. This thing's incredible, though. Feels like I'm still riding along, even though I've come to a stop. Because I've got to snap out of it eventually. The others are waiting for me. I better head back now. Again, though, it's just the fact it's, it's clearly got some kind of internal combustion going on. With the pistons and stuff. So it's that sense of, like, I still want to know how orbital engines work. Like, why does it have an exhaust? It's not that it doesn't make sense, it's like I literally, again, just want to know how it works and just interested. Welcome back, Reen. In the previous part... Well, how was it? I'm... I'm amazed, to say the least. The sheer speed, the engine's vibration, and the feeling of the wind as you ride along. Never experienced anything like it. No amount of horse riding could have even prepared me for this. Just... Wow. <laughs> Guess you've got some potential. Look at this guy. He's trying to act all calm and composed, but his face is just screaming, let me go back out and ride. Plain as day. Seems like you handled it really well too, based on your report. I have to admit, I didn't expect those kind of results out of you. It's a pretty unwieldy machine. It's even more impressive considering it was his first ride with her too. Nice to know that I could have a worthy rival waiting in the wings. <laughs> Not everyone can get that much praise out of Angie. You should pat yourself on the back. <laughs> it's a real honor. Now we need to hear some more detailed impressions of each phase. But let's do that back at the engineering building. Good plan. Ah, they're having so much fun with this. <laughs> Maybe too much. Thanks, Reen. The info you gave me should come in handy. <laughs> Glad I could help. I think she'll be a much more stable ride from now on. I'll have to be sure to tell Lisa's mother about everything we learned today if they end up mass producing orbital bikes. Lisa's mother is the chairman of the Rhinefoot group, isn't she? Didn't know you were familiar with each other. The Rogner and Rhinefoot families share a good relationship, actually. Oh yeah, they're both big names in Rua, right? Yeah, Angie's dad. He's one of the group's biggest shareholders too. Wow, they are pretty close. Well, now you know. Lisa's mother provided the engine and a number of other parts of the bike too. That's how you got your hands on everything. That's right. Although whether or not Reinford will actually mass produce the bike is an entirely different matter. Their biggest goal is to turn a profit. So the only way it's happening is if we can show them that it would make money. Which is why we're currently trying to make it into something that the masses can handle. And today, we were a big help in getting closer to that goal. Wow. I'd love to see that happen. <laughs> Looks like you get it. Guess my first impressions of you were right on the mark. Oh, I haven't properly thanked you yet, have I? Thank you for helping us today. Here's a little token of my thanks. Dragon Vein. Are you sure about this? Seems like a really valuable quartz. <laughs> of course. I'm sure you'll be able to put it to good use. Well then, Reen. Thanks a lot for your help today. I'd like it if you could help us out next time we need a hand too. I'll cancel my plans as soon as you ask. Indeed. Right, so I think we should end this part here then. And in the next part, we'll get the rounds out the way. And then... Uh, shoom. It depends how long it will take. I don't know because the 
There's plenty of other places I can go now. Things have changed slightly. It's like... Just... Don't really know at this point. Like, there's a lot of things around, so... We'll see what we get up to in the next few parts. Probably will be the old schoolhouse at some point. Probably the part after. We'll see. We'll see. Again. You know how these things work. We'll see you in the next part. Ta-ta for now.